That back there is the mothership, probably from an angle that you've never seen it. And there's probably a lot of parts that you haven't seen either. So let's go over them. We're going to work from top to bottom and make sure we touch on everything. I realized how that sounded as soon as I said it. Anatomy teachers do it thoroughly, and sometimes with diagrams. These tubes right here are the ureters. The kidneys are not pictured, but that is where these are coming from, and they make urine. This is the uterine tube. You might know it as a fallopian tube. I don't call it that. Number one, for accuracy. Number two, it was named after a Catholic priest, and I just don't like that. This structure that kind of looks like a flower is the fembrier. This is the catcher's mitt that kind of scoops up the egg when it's ovulated. The fembrier is not connected to the ovary. There is space there. It's not a closed system. This orange bulge right here is a follicular cyst. This will eventually rupture and release an egg during ovulation. If you didn't know or you've ever been told that you couldn't feel ovulation, that is incorrect. There are many, many people with ovaries that know when they ovulate. This would happen around day 14 of your cycle and can be associated with mild to relatively severe pain and even bleeding or spotting. These two little arms or feelers that look like they're kind of reaching out from the front of the uterus are the round ligaments. These are associated with round ligament pain, which can be abdominal pain or pelvic pain that happens usually during pregnancy. Welcome to the Hotel Uterati. This is the uterus. There are multiple layers of tissue here. The outer part, this chunk right here, is the myometrium. That's going to be smooth muscle and is responsible for contractions and period cramps. This inner surface, the endometrium, comes in two layers as well. It has a basal layer or a base layer that is made out of stem cells and then a functional layer that regenerates each month. And if there's no fertilized egg trying to take up residence here, this layer will actually be sloughed off and expelled during your period. Josh Cottle, anatomy teacher, at your cervix. This is your cervix, the door from the uterus to the vagina. There is a pervasive myth that the cervix does not have nerve endings and cannot feel pain. I can assure you that that is 100% incorrect. It is highly innervated and can be very, very sensitive. This is the mothership's exit and entrance, also known as the vagina. The outer part of this tunnel is made from smooth muscle, which if stimulated properly can become very contractile. This inner layer is actually self-lubricating despite not having any glands. Weird fact coming at you, the fluid that is produced here is water, electrolytes, and some protein, but is essentially ultra-purified blood. This structure here is your bladder, and as you can tell from this wonderful design layout, it is somewhat problematic during pregnancy when you have a fetus up here that wants to treat it like a trampoline. This right here is actually a remnant of your umbilical cord. This would have originally carried liquid waste to your placenta when you were in utero. Once you're a little further along in your fetal development, your urethra will open up and the kidneys and everything will be functioning and you will actually just pee into your amniotic sac, creating amniotic fluid. These right here are called the bulbs of the vestibule. They are made from erectile tissue and can become engorged with blood essentially giving you a female erection. This structure that looks a little bit like a walnut is called a Bartholin gland or the greater vestibular gland. When they're working normally, they produce lubrication for the area. If it decides to act like a little asshat, it can actually become blocked and cause a Bartholin cyst, which can be extremely painful. Over here, we're gonna have a piece of anatomy that eludes a lot of people. I don't know why, because it's right there. This is the glands of the clitoris. And if you didn't know, the complete clitoris is actually much larger than you normally see it shown. Fun fact coming at you, this is actually the analog to the male penis. If a female is exposed to testosterone, either artificially or through something like PCOS, this can actually develop hypertrophy. It can start to grow. And if you didn't know, it is highly innervated. And because it's made out of erectile tissue, even when you're aroused, it can still swell up. Now the nerve endings in here have caused a lot of debate. It started off very low at 8,000. The current number is like 10 to 11,000, but it's likely much, much higher than that. Because of all those nerve endings, it's really important to make sure you warm this entire area up before you come to this spot, because otherwise you might not get pleasure, you might get pain. And in more than a few people, it's always that way, so make sure you're using your communication skills. 
All right, last but not least, well, it is kind of least, this is the labia minora, which means small lips. Uh, it is not always the smallest. These can actually kind of protrude or droop down, and that is perfectly fine. Do not worry about that. The labia majora is not pictured because there are limits to what I can show on a video. Incoming anatomical pet peeve. This area, when observed from the outside, is not the vagina. It is called the vulva. Not to be confused with a volvo, which is a fine automobile, but not nearly as exciting as a vulva. Hopefully that was a helpful introduction to the female reproductive system. As always, thanks for learning with me. And if you have a question, you know what to do.